my work is always really based around melodies and tunes, so trying to look at the same tune from as many different angles as you can. Hi, Romy, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm really well, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming here to uh, have connection interview. And you were referred to me by Lucy, who's currently in Denmark. And yeah. I understand that you are from the Netherlands, but you are in Glasgow right now. I feel like this is getting really global. <laughs> Everyone yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your musical journey. Uh, how do you get started with the harp? And how have the harp take you all the way to where you are right now? Right. Um, so I think like many people, I started uh playing piano as a kid um uh, just at like local music organizations taking a couple lessons um and i started off in a quite classical sort of side of things um and it felt like it didn't quite click like there was something in learning classical music that felt like a barrier to me to actually understand what i'm doing um so after quite a lot of years, I feel um, kind of working away at my pieces, just trying to hammer them into my brain and into my hands, you know, um, I was like, okay, I don't think this is quite it. So maybe I'll get a piano teacher who can teach me different styles of music. So I moved to a more pop oriented teacher, um, which was all right, but in the building, like diagonally across from the pop piano room was the harp room. And it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's more interesting. That's what I'm kind of looking for. So um, yeah, I just went to try it out on an open day and ended up playing. Um, I was 14 when I first started the harp. And did you end up in Glasgow because you're studying the harp? Uh, yeah. Um, so started learning harp at the local music school still. And um, it's kind of a like mix of genres, learning all sorts of different things on the harp. Um, but I felt quite drawn to folk music and traditional music, like Irish Celtic sort of styles. Um, and when I was, I think, 18, um, there was a um, opening at a harp shop in the Netherlands called the Zingende Snar. It's a really big um, showroom of all sorts of harps. It's like paradise to go to, it's really good. And they organize loads of workshops and concerts all the time. It's really amazing. But um, they had just moved to a different location and to celebrate, they uh, had harp workshops um, from a harpist called Cheyenne Brown. And uh, she taught Scottish music. She came over from, uh, she lived in Glasgow at the time. And she herself is from America as well. So the internationalism <laughs> continues. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, a lot of people really, really enjoyed learning uh, Scottish music and learning by ear and by memory from her. So what ended up happening is she started coming over every month or six weeks or so just all the way over from glasgow wow. to this little corner of the netherlands to teach a bunch of people over the weekend and um yeah just growing in learning folk music i thought mm, i want to do more with that but i don't know where to go for it and it turns out glasgow is where you go for it <laughs> that's great uh, yeah um so i ended up uh, applying to the conservatoire in Glasgow to study Scottish music on the harp. That's fantastic. <laughs> so you started in Netherlands and then it leads you all the way to Glasgow yeah. where you are right now. Yeah. And you were the uh, audience award winner and also the second place in the Dutch Harp Festival World Competition 2021. Actually, yes. one of our team member, Angela, noticed your performance in there before you were even referred to us. So when she knew that you were sent to us, she was more than excited to learn that you were going to be our next guest. And congratulations on your beautiful you. performance. And you play a program called Lore. 
Yeah. And I thought that says capture your style quite well. Tell us about it and what can we expect when we listen to your music? Right. Um, I kind of formed this program. Um, the original concept for the program was for it to be about um, storytelling through music and like how when you play traditional music, um, it's considered good form to know about all your tunes and where they come from and like any historical significance they have um, and the way that stays interconnected with it. So um, that was the first sort of draft of the program. Um, then the festival itself got delayed by a year. Um, and during that year, I kind of reshaped the idea of storytelling with music and I wanted to make it more personal to me. Um, so instead of really like big stories of like, battles and wars and loss and kings and queens and those sorts of things, um, I wanted to make something that was really a lot more personal. Um, so I wanted to play some music of Scotland because like, oh, this is my home and this is where I sort of settled. Not just for music, but just as a new home for me. Um, but I also still like playing music from the Netherlands, which is quite historical, and staying connected to that. And then in between that, there's you know my own compositions, which are not necessarily connected to either place, but in a way they are. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I kind of wanted to put together a sort of um, I don't want to say snapshot because it's quite expansive but it's about um, life and um, being where you are and connecting with the people and the places um, yeah because yeah, in your website you said that you um, like to write music inspired by story, nature, artwork, and small things in life. So I feel like this program is uh, a depiction of, sort of that mentality that you hold towards. Yeah, people. I feel like, yeah, I feel like when you list it like that, um, yeah, I feel like making that program felt like I could really clearly define what the things were that I want to do with my music and what I want to write about. Because before that, it's like, oh, yeah, I just write stuff, you know, about things, I guess. But yeah, um, suddenly getting that really clear picture of, oh, yeah, this is actually what I'm doing. I didn't realize before. Yeah. So that must be a really good experience for you to have that competition to solidify your yeah. style. So tell us about your musical style, because I read a lot about, you know, the, ter the words that I've heard describing your music is contemporary, traditional, uh, a modern take on traditional music. So there's a, a sort of old and new juxtaposition going on in there, but it goes together really interestingly. And, and it actually sounds really pleasing. Tell us about that. And, and how did you find that sound? Um, yeah, I think. Mm... It sounds like a juxtaposition to say contemporary, traditional, but um, moving to Scotland and like learning about the traditional music culture, um, it feels for me like the tradition is already contemporary because it's already, you know, people are constantly passing tunes between each other and writing new tunes and um, experimenting with different world music styles in um in the way they write their scottish material and i feel like that's a development that's been going on for quite a while um it's kind of uh mixing your everyday trad music with maybe some jazz maybe some like samba brazilian stuff maybe some rock music uh, that sort of thing and you share with me the arrangement that you've done for the butterfly, Jake. And I uh, had a look at it with my teacher and he looked at it and go, this is 
kind of what I expect, but not what I expect either. It's, it's a very different take on something that we're sort of quite used to, if you will, in what, in what we expect. Can you play us a little something to sort of demonstrate what that sound of that traditional, contemporary traditional might sound like? Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the butterfly you just talked about. Um, yeah, when I did that, I was doing um, a little bit of music theory about more jazzy chords. Um, so I wanted to um, put that in the piece somewhere to kind of build the tension on it. And um, yeah, I felt it went together pretty well, actually. <laughs> so too and again yeah. it's it's both what we expect and not what we expect which is quite pleasant because you know we're so used to hearing the same tune over and over and i thought having that little twist there was makes it really surprising yeah, yeah. you compose quite a lot for solo harp as well so what yeah. can we expect when we get music from you other than your musical style uh, what are some of the things that you like to do in your compositions mm. Mostly I like to play with different time signatures. Um, I think on lever harp, that's really, I don't want to say an easy way, but a convenient way to set yourself apart from standard um, conventions. Um, and yeah, I think that's fun and surprising every time. <laughs> Um, I think that's like my main, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but like my main thing so that I tend signature. to reach for when I'm writing stuff. Yeah, a signature, that's that's a better word. <laughs> and if we were starting to learn a piece of your music and you have quite a lot to select from, which one would you recommend as a first piece? First piece of Romy music? It depends on, it depends on the person, I think. Like, do you want something that's a bit comfortable to start out with or something that's more challenging do you want to try different like extended techniques or um different rhythmic techniques um there's a lot of ones oh, <laughs> i feel like yeah i feel like a lot of people uh gravitate towards uh the piece that's called the oyster catchers that, that is the piece that angela cannot stop talking about <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a, a very small chat with her about it, but yeah. Um I think there is more people that gravitate towards it as well. Um it's it's definitely the most traditional but not of my pieces. Um it starts off in um in a ten eight time signature actually. Um which feels really complicated, but the tune goes it's it's a more it's a different thing to be counting because mm -mm. if you want to be really strict about it you're kind of counting to five each time instead of to four or to six or to three um 
but it still has that really comfortable sort of ebb and flow to it. Um, and and in the second part of that, it goes into a much more classic, traditional, real style um, piece. It's, it's really inspired by um, very traditional Gallic um, sung dance music. Yeah. I think a lot of people are drawn to that one. Um, I think it might be a good one to start yeah, with. Yeah. Right. It's got challenging bits, but it's got more comfortable bits as well. Um, a nice balance. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it's quite fun to work through. And it's got a fun, um, it's got a fun, fun sort of strummy section. which I think a lot of people will find fun to learn. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's so a that's oyster solo catchers. harp version for oyster catchers, yeah. but there's also a trio that uh, version that you have written for the Willow Trio, which we'll talk with them um, very soon. So for yeah. the audience who are interested in learning about this piece in the ensemble setting, come back and check it out. And I will get you to talk about the difference between writing for uh, solo harp and the trio uh, later in our yeah. second conversation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Stay tuned. <laughs> yes, stay tuned. Um, you, you seem to have a very um, good idea of sort of how you want to um, approach your music now, but I imagine that is not something that just all of a sudden come to you. What does creativity mean to you and how do you harness that creativity to find your own sound? Well, I think there's a lot of experimentation and a lot of trial and error sort of involved in developing your sound. And what you just said really resonated with me. I've heard somewhere that for every good idea, there's probably 10 bad ideas that you come up with before you have a good idea. So when yeah. you say there's a lot of trial and error and experimentation, I can really uh, see that. And how do you keep your um, momentum and, and energy to sort of keep trying for a new sound. Do you have any suggestions for us who are also looking to find our own sound with the heart? My work is always really based around melodies and tunes. So trying to look at the same tune from as many different angles as you can, like what happens if I put it into a different key? What happens if I put it into a different time signature? What happens if I pick chords that don't match it at all? Like where does it want to go? Um, and a different part, I think, is also listening to a lot of different things. And when you're working on a new piece, try to make like, um, it's almost like making a cork board of inspiration pictures, but it's pieces of music that you like the sound of. It, maybe it has a passage in there somewhere where you really like um the way the chords develop or a specific technique that the musicians use it can be any instrumentation really um but yeah try to really consciously think about the qualities that you want um the piece you're working on to have and like what you described there, it reminds me of us photographers doing a mood board for a photo shoot and we'll we'll have the different clips of things that inspire us and we put it together yes. and you're doing it with sound essentially. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> and is Harp the only creative outlet you have in life or do you have other creativity outlets as well outside of music? Because it seems mm. like you draw a lot of inspirations from different things around you. Yeah, <laughs> um, I've started I started doing some painting um, again for for the Willow Trio. We needed some covers, and I just had a really clear picture in mind of what I wanted it to look like. So I painted it, and I was like, "Okay, we need four more for the rest of our EP." So I had to paint the rest of them as well, um, just to stay really consistent in there. But yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Um, I like to knit. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, which I don't know how creative it is when you're just following the pattern, but I do like coming up with different um, things. 
Um, I There's think always quite... the colors that you can play with, which yeah, I love in knitting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think um, generally I'm quite visual. Um, some of my pieces are actually based on somebody else's art and thinking about how I can take the visual qualities of it and translate them to music in some way. Um, so it was like ink and um, sort of watercolors or like more textured um, painting styles or maybe um, might be like a sculpture or an entire scene. Um, I like to take visual elements and put them in music, but, but I guess also the other way around, um, creating visuals and then seeing how I feel like that. Um, yeah, I guess I have some creative outlets, but what I try to do with my non-harp outlets is I kind of want to keep them for myself, like non-performative. Right. I think that's always a good thing to have as well, especially if you're um, becoming a professional or a semi-professional to have things just for you. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What yeah. are some harp projects that you're working on right now? All right. Um, mostly I've been doing things for the Willow Trio, which we'll talk about when we talk with the Willow Trio. Um, after the competition, um, I decided that I wanted an album. So I've been, uh, I have most of the repertoire, which is also things that I played in the, comp in the com competition. Um, but I'd like to just make a few more pieces to kind of round it out and really get it exactly how I want it. So I've been working on that. Um, yeah, I think that's mainly it, writing some new things. And I have a curiosity question because I see a dusty spring part next to you. <laughs> and I've always yeah. been uh, interested in talking to people about the C-string heart because I use the C-string. How did you, you get <laughs> to learn about this uh, brand? And, and do, how did you get one all the way in the UK? Uh, not, not that it's not available, but I've always uh, like talking to people about Dusty only because I love Dusty. <laughs> yeah, um, so that first um, traditional Scottish style teacher, Cheyenne Brown, she plays a Dusty actually. and. Um, you know, before she became my teacher, I really admired her playing from afar and I was like buying all her CDs and watching more YouTube videos and then she became my teacher and I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, hearing her play her harp and actually um, at this harp shop showroom that I told you about the singing in the snare, they actually sell dusty strings, they just stock them. So That's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I... I just picked it. I, I got to try all different sorts of harps and makes, but this was the one, really. I thought it suited you really well, um, looking at you playing with it in the competition video. And uh, if you, if our audience hasn't, haven't already, check it out. I highly recommend that they watch it because it was a really nice set and I thought it was really well done. And uh, you did mention in when they give you the award that you're going to make an album and I'm glad to hear that you're continuing working on it. So that's wonderful. Yeah. And hopefully we'll get to see that album very soon. Uh, what are some of the ways we can stay in touch with the work? Um, I think the best way, and I always, <laughs> it feels like a fairly um, unprofessional way, but I mostly post on Instagram. Um, I do have on my website, um, if you go to contact, there's a newsletter set up. Um, so if anything big happens, I'll try to send one out. And um, your website is also where we can buy your sheet music, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we'll definitely include links in there. Um, and I, I think there's something wrong with Instagram. It's actually quite nice. Little snippets of what's happening in the yeah, it's life. Yeah, just... It's fun to be quite, um, quite personal and unpolished, you know, when on your website, you're like, yeah, I need to do my professional photos and my professional recordings. And on Instagram, it's like, I've put down my phone. And I'm going to film a little 
one minute thingy. Yeah, that's yeah. always fun. I really like that because the, there, there's something charming about that unpolished work. And it's good to, yeah. to know that it, it doesn't become polished all of a sudden. There's a lot of <laughs> work that goes behind it. Yeah, and I also like about um, websites like Instagram, how easy it is for people to just get in touch and have a little chat with you. Um, it makes people really approachable as well. well. Thank you very much for sharing your musical journey with us and talking about your solo work. And we'll be talking to the trio very soon. So I look forward to talking to you in a different context, in a harp ensemble context about yeah. your work with the real trio. And meanwhile, uh, good luck with your songwriting. I'm looking forward to hear your first album. Hopefully that thank will you. come out in the near future. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. We'll talk again very soon. <laughs>